Hi, welcome to my shop again. My goal over a series of projects is to share some techniques and uh, tips that will hopefully make your turning easier and more fun. Today, I will turn a kitchen utensil caddy. The dimensions of these are important to keep it functional. Uh, this is about five and a half inches tall, about three and a half inches in diameter on the inside. The outside diameter is about five inches and the weight's in the bottom, the size is in the bottom so that it it's, sits on the table, doesn't tip over and, and is functional. Um, I've made a, a few of these and uh, they ended up to be pencil holders or other things because uh, uh, they, they didn't work in the kitchen. So these dimensions are important. All right, let's get started. As I always do, we're going to start on between centers and we're going to start on the balance point so I got to get this uh, balanced up see the weight goes to the bottom I'm gonna lift it up from there and find that balance point I want the balance point so we can get the speed of the lathe up Oop, went too far see the weight went the other direction that time Oh, wherever I set it, it stays. Now the weight's balanced, okay? I'm going to get it tight. Make sure that it's good and secure on there. Everything is going to get tightened down. I'm going to lock the tail, the headstock in place. Jimmy the drive teeth so I can tighten it up even tighter. Now the drive teeth are in and the is secure. I'm going to bring the tool rest up very very close because when I turn it on it's just going to be a blur so I want the tool rest close so I know where the wood is when I put the gouge up to it. All right. We're going to ramp it up very slowly here to get the speed up. I'll feel the lathe and make sure that it doesn't vibrate. There we go. All right, get my face shield on. This is green wood, so it really doesn't uh, matter with a kitchen caddy whether it's round or not. After it dries, it may not be perfectly round. But because it's green wood, I'm going to use a faceplate, and we're going to make uh, put the screws directly into the wet wood. Uh, and so I need to make a concave surface here for the faceplate to seat on. And uh, I'm just going to do that with the same push cut right in to the side of the tree. Now we have it secured on the lathe with the face plate securely and safely. Uh, we're going to just true this up and get an outside shape. Now I'm ready to clean the surface up and I'm going to use a pull cut and we're going to go in the direction that's downhill to the fibers but I'm going to lower the handle of my bowl gouge and use the wing 
with a pull cut and a bevel support on the side to slice through the fibers cleanly the steeper that I have my handle the steeper the slicing action the cleaner the cuts going to be so I'm going to lower my handle and go downhill to the surface with a pull cut Okay, that's really nice. Now I don't have to do hardly any sanding. It's a very, very clean surface left behind. Now we're going to go in the back and we're going to round over the, the lower part of the vessel so that uh, we can start hollowing. And I'm just going to do a push cut here and swing my handle towards me and make a nice rounded surface. Go down the bottom. I can get rid of some of this waste wood. I don't want to hit the wing of my tool on the waste wood. I can round this over and get it to where it's going to sit on the table. Now I've got the outside done and I made the drill hole already and set up my boring bar and you can see at the tip of my boring bar I'm going to use the carbide cutter and we'll zoom out here so that we can see the whole bar set up okay so now we're ready to do some hollowing alright I'm going to take a, a pass here to hollow it out and I think the first thing you might notice the difference between the carbide cutter is watch the shavings pile up here making shavings instead of sawdust and if you look how hard I'm working just with my fingertips so what I'm going to do is make a cylindrical shaped hole in here to begin with and uh, the shavings kind of exit themselves they just kind of roll out so I don't have to fight with the shavings so much Okay, that was uh, the hard part, the work of getting the, the mass of the inside out. Now is when the fun starts. We're going to set up the laser to, to get us a, a measuring device and have some fun with that. Um, we'll use a card to set the laser up with. The, the long line of the card is the tangent, the area that we're going to be working on. The long line is, is parallel to that. The arrow line 
is 90 degrees to that. So when we're going to set the laser on the arrow line, it'll be uh, the gap that's left behind between the cutter and the laser is going to be our measuring device, and that gap has to be 90 degrees through the wall. So we're going to use that arrow to set it up. So I'm going to line it up with my, my wall here, and I'm going to bring it over to the carbide cutter, and you see where the laser is now is in the wrong place. I've got to move it over on the arrow, and I'm going to make it a little bit thinner than that line, just inside the line. It's all about the gap. So now we move the laser over so that it's right on the line. The gap between the, the cutter and the laser is going to be my wall thickness. I have that set, oh, maybe about a fat eighth of an inch. Okay, I don't want to make this too thin because we're going to put kitchen utensils in it. Don't want to make it too fragile, so but about an A, 3 sixteenths of an inch should be good. Okay, when we get ready to measure the wall thickness, the laser is going to give us an early warning. It'll get elongated. That tells us to slow down, and when we make it disappear, it tells us to stop. Then the gap that's left behind is the wall thickness. So how we're going to do this, we're just going to go in and measure, measure, measure until the laser disappears, stop, 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 okay, now the, the measure, the wall thickness there is measured for that first half inch or so, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to clean up the tool marks, very gently sweep back and forth, make sure that everything is nice and clean, because once I continue on on another stage, I can't go back. This is going to dry out. It's not going to be round anymore. I'm going to lose my support. It would vibrate, so I can't go back. I want to make sure that I'm very nice and clean and finished on the inside before I go on to the next stage. I got the shavings out of there so now I can feel that surface a little bit better and clean up the, the surface without the shavings in my way and get them nice and clean in there. The shavings have started to fight me a little bit. When the drill hole is gone and the inside is done, the sidewall is done, I need to do two things. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to reset the laser with no gap. And so the laser is going to move out right at the tip with no gap. Okay? I can tell exactly where the bottom is. So all I'm going to do really is just clean up the bottom. I don't have to go any deeper. Um, so it's just a matter of uh, uh, getting the, the work tool marks out that I left behind from my hollowing, from my hogging off. Okay. The first thing I needed to do is set the laser with no gap. The second thing I'm going to need to do is get the cutter right dead on the center line. When I'm on the center line, it's going to melt away like butter, but if I'm too high, it's going to fight and have a nub in the bottom. If I'm too low, it'll leave a cylinder. Of, of wood there that never gets cut if I'm cutting too low. So I need to get right on the center line. So I'm going to scratch a line across the bottom with the lathe off. Take a flashlight and look in there and see, okay, I have see my little scratch mark. I'm a little bit too high. I'm about an eighth of an inch too high. So I'm going to use my, my threaded post here as a way to incrementally change this and get that lowered down on the center line. Scratch a line again. Look in there with my flashlight. Oh, it looks like I might have it. Now when I've got the center height correct, the bevel supported cut right at the tip of the carbide cutter 
is going to make a nice, nice clean cut across the bottom. And all I need to do is wash the laser and I can wash the shape of the bottom. And the depth of the bottom. Oh yeah, that's nice. Hear the little hissing sound? So I'm going to come straight across the bottom, watch the laser just going straight across. And then transition it into the wall, up the wall. Oops, I hit the boring bar here. Did you hear that sound? So I want to keep the handle back a little bit so that that doesn't touch the rim. Now the laser is going to show here because it's not set with any gap. So all I'm doing is just cleaning up any tool marks. Oh yeah, that's sweet. That's very, very nice. No tool marks, all clean, straight across the bottom. I am done with the inside. Okay, now we've, uh, we've reversed it. What I did is have a waste block of wood here that I put a recess in so that the top of that seats down in there. That didn't have to be a perfect jam fit because I'm bringing my tailstock up to hold it. But now we can clean this up with a bowl gouge and get this bottom nice and clean in the shape that I want. I want to do a little bit of concave bottom so that it sits out here on the rim. I'd like to give a shout out to Carl Jacobson. Carl is one of the celebrities on YouTube uh, for turning. I thank him for his support and encouragement to uh, get me going on these YouTube clips. Thank you, Carl. I have a shed out uh, the back door of my shop and uh, Mamba Robin and babies uh, do their thing every spring. I thought I'd show you a little snapshot. Uh, hopefully I catch them feeding. <laughs> 